Hi everybody again. Welcome to unit four of week two of our Open SAP course. My name is Samuel Lehmann. I'm working as a product manager in the Intelligent Enterprise product management team. And today we will focus on cloud identity service. We have yesterday already talked about it, especially in the overall BTP solution architecture for SAP Task Center. We have seen that except cloud identity service is one essential part, yeah, for example, in the in, well, for SAP Task Center. Siren, as we already are, or my colleague Matt Asmus, for example, talked about the sub integration strategy topic. Let's focus directly on the sweet quality, consistent security, and identity management. And if we look a bit closer in sub cloud identity services, we see here we focus on. Authentication, for example, so we have the identity authentication part of subcloud identity services. We have also the identity directory uh, that is also used, for example, yeah, to provide skim APIs if you want to connect, for example, from external systems to cloud identity services. Or if you talk later, for example, about the topic user UUID or global user ID, all the identity directory is one essential part. And additional, the third Capability is here, yeah, right? Identity provisioning. Yeah, so we are able, for example, also to replicate users via the IPS or identity provisioning service of sub cloud identity services into, for example, SaaS solutions like, for example, the success factors or uh, sub Ariba. Yeah, that's possible resource IPS service. And if you have a look on the high level reference architecture, you will see yeah, that sub cloud identity services is also possible to well to have in your landscape if you have a hybrid setup. Yeah. For example, you are using for example sub identity management in for as for on premise, for example. Yeah. And then you can also connect to them, for example, to cloud identity service in this case, yeah, to for example connect or replicate users then also in SAS solutions, yeah, as mentioned, like for example, sub Ariba, sub feed class. Or others, yeah, or directly in the BTP. That is possible. Yeah? And yes, we can also connect based on the open architecture. So we are using here the Scheme API, where you can also, for example, access sub cloud entity service from externally. Yeah? And you can find the, the API definitions here as well on the API Business Hub. Therefore, let's have a look here if you want to get more details about this. Yeah? And if we now look a bit more in detail about identity provisioning, I think it's really clear what identity provisioning will do. It reads, for example, users of the source system. For example, it can read, for example, uh, users from a success sector system, for example, yeah, and then replicates this via the IPS service into a feed class system. Yeah, that is possible. <coughs> or we can uh, for example, also use the source system, the IES itself. Yeah? So if you have users stored, for example, in the IES tenant, it's also possible uh, to read users from the IPS services, from IPS into, for example, in this case, maybe in Ariba. Yeah? That is also possible. And what, what's really nice feature is also filtering. So you can, for example, define groups, for example, yeah? for example, purchasers or business users. And then you can select, okay, this users will only be replicated, for example, in case of purchasers, for example, in Ariba. Yeah? That's this other one capability which IPS provides. And in addition to this, and that we see in here, yeah, it's, I think, a lot of adapters or connectivity options which we provide to other solutions, BTP services, like, for example, CFLP or WorkZone, but also other solutions like, as we already mentioned, Field Class, for example, or s Cloud, and much more. And any, many more will come also in the feature yeah, that we provide here, more and more adapters. And we are now have a look on the identity directory. As initially also outlined, it's well, is here, for example, all the central component, yeah, for example, persisting users and all the groups. And that's the idea about the identity directory. And right, right, if you, for example, replicate users, as mentioned before, you will read uh, basically the users from, for example, the identity directory via IPS and can replicate that into a SaaS. Or you can also connect, for example, an identity management system and use a Skim API. Uh, for example, yeah, where we can then also create users in sub-cloud entity services. And one 
essential part, especially for new developments, like yesterday already outlined, for example, the task center was up start. We have now also identity, uh, introduced a new single common user identifier, so called global user ID, which is also stored in the cloud identity services. And what is really required, especially if you're talking, for example, about sub task center, you can identify if you want to identify, for example, a user, if he has or she has a task in this connected system, like for example, feed class, we need one, one key value or a key to identify, okay, you are really the user. And then we can identify, for example, this user has a task in, for example, a feed class or another system. And therefore, yeah, the user UUID is used. Yeah? And the user UUID is a technical feed name as a global user uh, ID is, I think, the noun user, which we are, uh, we are talking about it. Huh? And if you have a closer look, yeah, also the default setup or let's have the sub flavored style, yeah, would be okay using please uh, the cloud identity services to generate also the UUID value. And then you can replicate this, for example, via IPS in the target solution, as mentioned before. Yeah? But, and you can also yeah, connect your identity management to a uh, cloud identity service. So if you are running, for example, cloud identity service with proxy mode, or able, for example, also connect, for example, an Azure Active Directory or something like this. And in addition, uh, if, you, if you want to, for example, to create uh, your own global user ID without using a cloud identity services, then you can also provide, for example, the, the, the user UID value from your custom IDM solution. Yeah? And you can then create, for example, the the data set in Cloud Identity Services and provide your value uh, if this is different. And now yeah, let's, let's have a short demo. I want to show you here, I think, a nice demo about biometric authentication. And we have also maybe a short look on the UUID value or also global user ID called, yeah, where we can see, okay, how this looks like, for example, also in a Cloud Identity Service tenant. Okay, let's start with a short demo in regards to authentication on EIS. So we are here on the IES tenant, maybe some of you know. And we want now enable biometric authentication, for example, for one of our applications, or I've created here an open SAP application. And for this, we need now to enable the biometric authentication. And let's all currently on the IIS side. And if we now go back and close, for example, first of all, the IIS tenant, and now we are seeing here, for example, uh, our, our BTP sub account, we are able uh, now, for example, to jump in one of our services. I've subscribed here as Launchpad service, that we all will have a chance yeah, to check later on how uh, if the biometric authentication really works. But first of all, we need to open our profile. And this can be done openly this way. So let's first of all log on this basic authentication. And here we see, okay, that's an <coughs> open SAP profile, which we have here and uh, we can now, for example, activate different kinds of authentication. We can also enable certificate-based authentication, but we want now to use biometric authentication yeah, by adding here, for example, entering again the password. And then we are asked it, okay, from the browser here to add this, and we can now add the new device, for example, my MacBook Pro maybe, and click OK. And now biometric authentication is enabled. And to ensure this, it's really working here, uh, not just an example, we are now switching back to our BTP or open the Launchpad service, for example. And if we now log out, first of all, and opening now the
So, if you're now opening the open SAP Launchpad site, which I've created shortly, now we see here, okay, well, additional to the standard authentication, we have now all the biometric authentication. Well, and by selecting now the biometric authentication, you can say, okay, continue. We need to, to accept that this is the right one. And then we are asked from our device to authenticate via fingerprint directly. And for example, this kind of Launchpad servers where all the SAP Task Center is running. And that's it. And it's really nice and really cool, I guess, yeah? and really simple to enable also on your landscape. Hi again, and as mentioned, I want also to show you a bit the context of the global user ID. For example, we are here again in the identity authentication service and the ES tenant, and I have currently selected or searched for one user. And if we have a detailed look on the user on the details, we will see now, yeah, the mention value or field user UUID or the code or its global user ID. Yeah? And this value right is really distributed, especially for example for the task center across the systems which are connected to the task center. For example, we will see now I switch now shall be over to success vectors, for example, that we have exactly this value for this user also available in success vectors. Well, and if we do so now, let's go to, to the success vectors, or maybe let's use the API to fetch information from success vectors. I'm using here the skim API, as mentioned, we are providing here for our solution skim APIs yeah, to also access the system from externally. So if we now searching for the user, name, we will now hopefully also identify that the user UUID value is stored there as well. Yeah, and here we are. Yeah, we see as an external ID, the field name is a bit different, yeah, but we see that the value of user UUID with 979 is available also on success factor side. Yeah? And if you check back, we see here, ah, the 979 is really our value from the user UUID field coming and generated in this case also from EIS. All right, hopefully uh, the demo was, well, has explained a bit the uh, topic about authentication, what's possible with cloud anti service, and also uh, maybe a deeper look on the global user ID topic was helpful to understand well, how this looks like or how this can be maintained in, for example, in this case, the cloud anti services. So let's, let's come out to more or less the end of the unit. So some key takeaways. I think what's clear, I think, okay, we have a, a lot of connectors available, for example, by using cloud identity service to replicate, for example, users. Yeah? That's possible via IPS, as mentioned before. Yeah? I think it's a modular architecture. Yeah? So you can also use, for example, or connect third-party system by using all those cloud identity services. And we are providing APIs, yeah, where you can really uh, connect externally also to our solution, read users, uh, write users, yeah. And this is an essential, crucial part for sure, especially for SAP BTP. Yeah? So also, if you, for example, now bit the BTP platform concept, and you can now also connect, for example, the cloud identity services as a platform IDP, yeah. So that's it's also a possibility. What is in the past that will be new? feature on BTP side, so, so you can then define, for example, admin users yeah, on your BTP and, and central custom ERS or cloud identity service tenant. Yeah. And that's also, I think, really helpful yeah, to, for example, manage, yeah, for example, platform users centrally in cloud identity services, yeah, as well as business users. And with that, I want to maybe highlight some nice for good information. So again, Please check the Discovery Center. We have here some, some missions available. And also here we have some um, topics about reference architecture, some blocks. My colleague, for example, Sonia Petrescu has wrote a blog or Gunnar Kosche yeah, can really say, let's have a look into this yeah, to understand the overall topic. And yeah, please check also the community page about subcloud and services. To get more information and more links and also maybe some replays from last community calls for example yeah so let's let's try to do this to to get familiar with this topic yeah and 
to get now really yeah that this is really an essential part or essential sweet quality for us yeah for yeah, to enable scenarios for example or single sign on in, in cross application use cases therefore really really important to understand the benefit and the usage of the cloud entity service especially as we are uh, using this for new developments like uh, as mentioned so task center with that i want to highlight here again one one two links here again regards to the sub roadmap or sub help and yeah, finally, we are done with this unit. So hopefully you have joined a bit yeah, and also the demo was uh, has explained something yeah, for you, I guess it's helpful. So thanks and yeah, see you soon. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.